Hello, hello. I know what you're saying. What What is this? This is Art of War, but this is cards of some description? Yes, uh, we have been getting into Star Wars Unlimited recently. Uh, it is a new card game. came out not that long ago. It's been picking up quite a bit of steam, and uh, Nick and I have been having a hell of a lot of fun. We uh, went to a store showdown just the other uh, just the other week, and Nick and I did pretty good. This was our first tournament for this game, but I have been playing card games for a long time. I played I played Magic for a while, and then I played Hearthstone for a bit, and then I played Legends of Runeterra and a couple other like card games as well. Kind of went on hiatus for a bunch of those, but I was looking for a card game to pick up, and Star Wars Unlimited just came out, and it's been a ton of fun so far. I think we're looking for another tournament to go to for sure. Uh, unfortunately, we just missed a couple of the larger tournaments in the area, Shucks, but we'll, uh, we'll we'll be able to get there and go to bigger events as they keep happening. You know, maybe review Shadows of the Galaxy as it comes out. And by maybe, I mean, we're going to do that. All right. So what I took was I took Luke Green Midrange. Midrange is my favorite archetype, so I knew I was going to do some kind of midrange, and Luke looked like a lot of fun. I cycled through trying out some Luke Yellow stuff and some Luke Red stuff, and they seem interesting, and I might continue to try that, uh, you know, in the future, continue to work on it. But Luke Green just looked like it did some absurd things, and I really liked that. Um, you know, Boba Boba Green looked interesting as well. I mean, obviously, it's an incredible deck, um, as well as the Vader Green that uh, Nick ended up working, you know, ended up running. We ended up working on that deck together. I built this one myself, although I've definitely had some inspiration from some things on the Internet. Um, and, yeah, I think Luke Green just looked like a ton of fun. And it just has good, efficient dudes that do good, efficient dude things. Uh, you restock the board pretty well. You're very sticky on the board. You're very able to stick dudes and keep them on the board. And uh, your, your guys are just better than your opponent's guys a lot of the time. And you can kind of go long with that uh, game plan in mind. So let's go over the deck real fast because... Uh, I spent a lot of time working on this and trying to tune a whole lot of different stuff. There was a couple of card um, availability issues, as uh, we will talk about, but uh, by and large, I was pretty, pretty close to what I wanted to do. So Luke is interesting. He is a leader that lets you pay one and tap him, uh, and he gives a shield token to a heroic unit played this phase. I wasn't like super hung up on doing this early. You get decent value out of this late, as you tend to have you know, extra mana floating and your entire goal is value. Uh, he gives great value. The shields can add up and can be a real pain in the ass for your opponent. Um, but early game, the shields are a good way to like feel not too bad about playing off curve, right? Like if, if you, you know, you're playing on turn three or turn two with three mana up and you play, you know, a battlefield marine because your deck is just not giving you what you want, you're going to feel a little bit better if that battlefield marine comes with a shield attached to it. But realistically, early game, it's not the biggest deal. It's really mid to late game. You really start getting the value out of it. Um, you know, probably mid game is where it's at its best. You know, you drop in an echo base defender, your opponent drops something, you give it a shield pass turn, and suddenly, you know, they're not getting through into your base on that turn. And that is very helpful. So it's very good on things like Bright Hope, on things like Echo Base Defender, on you know even things like Battlefield Marine if you play it and you have some mana left open. It's great early into Alliance Dispatcher and R2-D2 because they are one mana and you have a mana floating, so screw it. I, uh, sometimes you want to you know give up the initiative in order to get them a shield token. Sometimes you do not. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. Generally, when you can weave it in, it's nice, but it's not essential. His flip side is pretty damn solid. Uh, six mana, four, seven is, I mean, honestly, pretty reasonable as far as leaders go. He comes out a little late, right? He comes out after Boba. He comes out after Sabine, um, which can cause you some serious problems, but if you can survive to that point, he is he is a beating. He's an absolute beating when he comes out. There's multiple ways that he can be a problem. You can sneak him out early with resupply into Luke's lightsaber and just like end the game early uh, if they're not ready for it. You can drop him and then you know drop Luke uh, on the following turn, swing with uh, leader Luke and give uh, regular Luke a shield, which is pretty solid. Like you 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 
flip him on six, you play, uh, you know, Bright Hope to lock up uh, space. You attack, give Bright Hope a shield following turn. You know, they finally get through Bright Hope. You drop Luke, blow them up, and your leader Luke attacks and gives Luke a uh, unit a shield. And uh, your value there is, is pr pretty high. Him attacking and giving a shield is a really good value engine. If he sticks on the board for more than a turn or two, uh, it usually the, your opponent usually loses the board at that point. Um, he also has a lightsaber, which him like Vader, their lightsaber is ridiculous when you play it on them uh, after they drop in, and you know you're going to have them, and you also know that you have Luke unit in your deck. So I like having a couple of those. But yeah, Luke unit or Luke leader at least when he flips is just a good value fella. Like he's not essential for the deck. To be honest, if in the future a uh, different blue leader comes out, you can make basically the same deck around him. The shields are nice on certain units like Bright Hope or Echo Base Defender. Not essential, but very nice. And him as a flipped unit is an absolute beating, and that usually marks the inflection point of the game where you start, uh, where your units start sticking, theirs start dying, and then you just grind them out a lot of the time. Okay, going uh, over to the base, we got ECL, Energy Conversion Lab. And this uh, is absurd. So I originally had Echo Base, which is 30 health and, you know, no text. And that's quite good. The thing I was finding was that, I mean, we haven't been playing for long. I've playing, been playing for probably a month, and, you know, my day job is 40K, so not a ton of... Um, not a ton of of reps able to play in but you know at night i can definitely over over analyze and read and reread and read and reread the cards and and i've played a lot of card games so that definitely helps but i was running into the problem where sabine would just run me over like if i lose it basically what would happen is i would lose the board for like a turn or two and the next thing i know i'm taking massive damage to my dome and by the time I've taken the board back, right, I'm like six feet under and it doesn't matter, right? By the time I'm like, no, 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 you know, Echo Base to Bright Hope and Kanan Jarrus and Luke Skywalker unit and Redemption and Home One are too strong for you. They're like, that's fun, but you're dead. Um, and that kept that that kept being a problem no matter how I sliced it. So I, I definitely tilted the deck a little bit in favor of trying to uh, have an, a very good main deck plan, pre-board plan into aggro because Sabine and Leia and that sort of thing would just, they take the board and they take the board very efficiently and very well a lot of the time off of um, the their leader flipping and also them being able to ECL in like Sabine Green Bean. Uh, gets to ECL in um, the the company, the 7-7 seven seven that, that swings with Overwhelm. And next thing you know, you're like, oh, damn, he just dropped a 2-5 and a 7-7 seven seven, uh, on turn 4-5 or whatever on their five-mana turn. Like, on their four-mana turn, they flip Sabine, they drop in a four-cost unit, uh, and then you're sad, and then you play something, and then they hit you for a bunch, and then they claim the initiative, and they drop in uh, the the company at 7-7 seven, seven with Energy Conversion Lab and blow you up. And, like, before you have the board back, because, like, sure, my units are better than theirs, right? Late game, they're more value. I will grind them out eventually. But by that point, I'm dead, and it doesn't matter. So... ECL was thrown in there because, you know, 25 life versus 30 life is a big deal into aggro, but not losing the board is a bigger one, in my opinion. And my plan was to attack aggressively back into their board using ECL early, like, and I mean early, early, like Battlefield Marine on turn one to blow up, you know, Sabine unit early, like... They drop Sabine, I go, cool, Battlefield Marine ECL. <laughs> Screw your Sabine, she's dead. I have board control. You know, there, there's no, no, none of this. Echo Base Defender into, you know, there's Sabine or Kanan on four or Bright Hope or Escort Skiff or Consortium Star Viper or something early. Even, screw it, right? Battlefield Marine on one, uh, then on two, you go ECL Fleet Lieutenant. Fleet Lieutenant makes the Battlefield Marine attack. I get two attacks and then I also get to uh, claim the initiative, right? Just don't lose the board early is the, is the only thing that matters for me. And for that... ECL. ECL feels pretty good. I'm not making as best use out of it as I possibly could. Part of that was uh, card availability. Uh, Consortium Star Viper, I think, is a three of in this deck, and unfortunately, I had two of them. Uh, just 
random like i had three luke skywalker units i just was randomly like oh i guess i didn't order any consortium star vipers whoops uh, <laughs> so i had one from cracking a pack and nick had one so between the two that was two Anyway, Energy Conversion Lab, really good at not losing the board, and not losing the board is the most important thing into, you know, Boba Yellow, Boba Green, uh, Sabine Green, Sabine Red, Sabine Yellow, Leia, you know, Red, all of those. It just don't lose the board. <laughs> don't lose the board early, and they can't translate that into damage as effectively. And then you will at some point get to late game where you have all those restores. And the other thing is the deck has a lot of restore, but if you're too dead to use restore, then it doesn't matter. Right, like I can develop my restore units. I can develop Kanan, who heals for like one or two every time you attack, and I can develop, you know, Luke Skywalker and Yoda all I all I friggin' want. But if I'm dead by the time they meaningfully develop and then start attacking, it doesn't matter, right? So ECL is great because you can drop Kanan on four, hit, get the heal immediately, clear something off the board, and you have that threat for the following turn. And that probably is worth more than five health on average. And into other matchups, it's a big deal as well. Um, so going over the cards, that's that's my thought on the base. I, I went back and forth long and hard on it, but I, I think ECL enables me to not lose the board, and losing the board is how you get blown up. So don't do that. Uh, Alliance Dispatcher, I could see cutting. He was pretty decent. I ended up not hitting him a lot. Like I ended up not getting him early and then resourcing him late. Uh, he's pretty good theoretically into um, a lot of aggro because like him on one they drop something, then you get to drop Kanan on the following turn is, is a huge deal, right? Or you drop Fleet Lieutenant and hit them with something with a shield. You need to be worried about, like, you drop Alliance Dispatcher. If, if you have initiative and you drop Alliance Dispatcher and they drop Sabine Unit, you immediately claim. Don't give him a shield. Because if you give him a shield, they're going to claim and then attack Alliance Dispatcher, ping his shield off, and kill him. So um, that's the thing I was worried about the most. Now, that interaction never came up, but... I would have just drop Alliance Dispatcher, they play Sabine, and immediately it's just Kanan's coming out, right? Like, initiative claimed, I'm not letting, you can attack into Alliance Dispatcher next turn if you want. The thing about him is that sometimes he's brutal, right? Sometimes he stays out for several turns and drops a Kanan on two and drops a Luke, you know. I, I, there was a, a game where I flipped Luke Leader and then Alliance Dispatcher dropped in Luke unit and then Luke leader attacked and like that was the turn where I won the game um the main issue with alliance dispatcher or or he lets you drop in a unit a little early right like and then he lets you get a shield so like alliance dispatcher turn to echo base defender for two and then shield echo base defender can be a good move against uh various Sabine game plans that being said he's not a permanent fixture on the board right like in the same way a resupply is going to you know if i resupply on three i'm playing redemption on seven right you know i'm playing u-wing reinforcement on six right there's the, if i drop alliance dispatcher and he dies before luke comes out i'm not dropping luke on six i'm dropping luke on seven now he does take an attack which in those matchups might be okay there's a reason why I said he's cuttable. That being said, the prospect of going Dispatcher into Kanan on uh, turns one and two and just absolutely blowing Sabine out of the water is something that really appealed to me, right? Alliance Dispatcher into Bright Hope on turn two, bring Bouncy Alliance Dispatcher back to my hand. Definitely draw a card, definitely something I was thinking about. He could be dropped. Alliance Dispatcher into Escort Skiff, also quite good because he's green and enables Escort Skiff to attack. So definitely all things I was thinking of. Um, ultimately, I might cut him going forward. I'd have to do a serious think uh, on that. But he is useful at just like blowing out early aggro game plans. If you can drop him, stick him, and drop something big on the following turn, that's like your your first line of like, hey, you actually don't get to play this game. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, R2-D2 is great. He just kind of filters the top of your deck. He filters your draw, which is nice. Uh, his stat line is all right. It definitely needs help. So a one mana one four is like theoretically good, but it's you're only really good if you actually can contribute to the fight. And into Sabine or into aggro decks, generally, they have like three health duders all over the place. So you really need to be able to do three damage. Luckily, R2-D2 can. Fleet Lieutenant can make R2-D2 do you know, three damage to something, right? You drop R2, they drop Sabine, you claim, you, you know, you hit them with Fleet Lieutenant, they didn't do any damage, and your R2 is, you know, a 3-2 uh, for that attack. Sorry, he's a 1-2 now. 
that's pretty good. Um, he's a good fleet lieutenant target. He's a good entrenched target. He's a good devotion target. There's a lot of, like, him by himself, not amazing. He'll filter your draw, which is dope, against, like, control decks or whatever. Um, but he won't, he, he's not going to help out the, um, the aggro game plan unless you have something to pair with him, which is kind of the same way Alliance Dispatcher is. You want one of them and then something else. So R2-D2 plus Fleet Lieutenant, pretty dope. You're going to kill something, still stick him, filter your draw, love that. You know, make sure your home ones stay till the end, that sort of thing. Him plus Devotion, a 2-5 that heals you for two is really good right off the rip. Love that, especially if you give him a shield, right? If you know you're going to get Devotion, you can throw up a shield, and then they likely hit you in the face for some amount, which is not going to be fun. But, you know, you can take it, and then you drop Devotion on R2 and hit him in the face, something like that. Or hit him, hit him one of their units and start trying to get them off the board. Uh, Entrenched is obviously like the big one into um, into aggro game plans because then he becomes a four seven that is just absolutely cleaning their clock every turn, and that's that's really nice. He'll be killing units until until the cows come home for sure. Um, just just generally a little little dude who filters your draw and can contribute a little bit, and I, I liked having him for sure. Restock, I'll come back to that later when I talk about the control game plan, but one of those is thrown in for control. Um, we have a bad control matchup, unfortunately. Our matchup into aggro, especially with the way I've teched it, I, I feel like is pretty damn good. Uh, our matchup into control is 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 rough right off the rip. Like The way that mid-range matches up against control is that they are a little bit slower than we are, right? Or ranging to quite a bit slower, right? If you're looking at the mill game plans, those are very slow, but they're going to outvalue us as we try to go for things. I've put in several ways that we can like attack control decks uh, on a different axis. Um, some of that's in the sideboard, but I want to include that decent amount of that in the main board um, because you might not get a chance to actually take a third game into them if you do tech really well and win the second, or you might even get a second game, to be honest with you. So you don't want to lose the first one if it's going to take a while. I mean, you can snap concede, but like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you can, but then you have to win 2-0, which is rough, um, especially since they'll it'll take a while. Into aggro, I also wanted to have a decent game plan uh, in main deck because just winning 2-0 into aggro and just hoping the cards come together, even if you made your sideboard extremely toxic to aggro decks, it is going to not be very fun. Um, but we'll get back to restock when we talk about uh, the control the control matchup. Basically, it's just in there to cycle home ones to the bottom of my deck and just continue to provide a burst of value. And if if they aren't expecting it, you have it in their hand and you have it in your hand, you basically ought to win the game. If if you have it in your hand and they go to mill you out and they they mill you down to nothing, they use all three of their vigilances because they're like, I'm gonna win now. You take a little bit of damage, make sure they don't have anything, and then you restock two home ones and a redemption to the bottom of your deck and and you know, two home ones, redemption, and a restock, and then they go, oh, oops, <laughs> that's that's not going to be so much fun. Uh, and then they have to navigate around that because they'll have to restock. It, it gets really dumb. Really, what you want to do is just restock multiple home ones so that they run out of answers to it. Um, but if you have to, if you absolutely have to, you can restock those. They'll restock their vigilance, and then they're going to. Tr- you have to make sure restock is on the top because they'll try and vigilance it out. It's I hate it so much. Uh, I, you can't guarantee that, but like hopefully, right? You know, um, really, I don't want to be playing in that sphere. They have more things for that matchup generally than we do, but we have we have options. Um, and also, a lot of the time, I've seen people being very greedy, right? One, including one restock in their control deck, and just being like, "Oops, it got Spark of Rebellion. Guess I lose." Don't worry, we have that. Uh, Restore Dark. Uh, just a two mana, two, three, gets a body on the board early. The restore can matter. It adds up over time. Uh, the stats are kind of bad into aggro because uh, it's a two, three. It doesn't actually kill anything. You need three attack for that. So again, you're going to want entrenched or devotion or something on it uh, in order to get it really cooking. And that, But like I did have a game into Sabine that got really hairy that I did win because I put two devotions on a restored arc and just clocked them in the face for friggin four every turn healed me for five and that got around the fact that they had a four seven sabine hitting me for five every turn and it's like hits me for five ouch restored arc for five okay it hits me for five restored arc for five until eventually i could drop a luke skywalker make it an o2 and trade um like the the restore can matter it's an early body you need those uh because you need to be able to put you know 
put a, put abilities on it, put pants on it, and just get it going. Um, Luke's lightsaber. I didn't include three because I don't really want this outside of putting on Luke Leader, but Luke Leader loves Luke's lightsaber. You know you're going to have Luke Leader, right? You know you're going to have Luke Skywalker, Faithful Friend. You know you're going to flip that six mana four seven for free. And um, if you drop a Luke's lightsaber on him, he becomes a seven eight, which is just a beast of a, of a stat line. They can't really kill your leader that well. Vanquish doesn't do it. You know, the the what rivals fall isn't out yet <laughs> which is good um but yeah luke's lightsaber making it a seven eight is just something that's r really 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 hard to deal with um and then also if it's luke skywalker which it is um you heal him fully and give him a shield token which you can just do proactively just to make him a seven eight and give him a shield token which is nasty enough but a lot of the time they won't be able to deal with a four seven and one attack and if they're not thinking of Luke's lightsaber, they walk right onto this, um, where they one thing attacks Luke, and you just go, cool, Luke's lightsaber. <laughs> now I'm healed to full, and I have a shield token. You can also flip Luke. They do something. You hit and kill one of their guys. They can't quite kill you back. Maybe they don't have anyone else in the arena or whatever. And then you just go lightsaber. Uh, it's very strong. I love having one of these. I don't want to have more than one, but I would like to have one a decent amount of the time. I do have Luke unit. He's insane, but uh, I didn't want to include three, right? Three is to the point where, like, I'm going to be upset if I see all... If I see all three in a game, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, and I have to resource all of them. Uh, if I see both of them, I'll resource one. It won't be the end of the world. I'd like to see one. I don't really need to see two. So that's why I made it a two of. Devotion was really good. Um, I made it a two of. It wasn't, like, ever a blowout. If I played more aggro, I played a decent amount of mid-range. I think I played Tarkin, and I played Sabine, and I played... Um, what did I play? I played Boba. I played Boba for sure. Uh, various stripes. I think I played, like, multiple different Bobas. I played a control deck. Uh, I played... Into those, Devotion is kind of whatever, although a lot of the units just need plus one, plus one to get over breakpoints. Uh, Yoda really likes having Devotion. Um, Restored Arc really, really wants it. R2-D2 really wants it. Other than that, oh, Bright Hope really likes it. <laughs> yeah, Bright Hope loves Devotion. And that being said, it's not like the most insane thing in the world, but when I had it, I was quite happy I had it, and then it's in the sideboard as well, so I just go up to three copies against Aggro. Um, entrenched, I did the full three because it's pretty versatile. Against mid-range and aggro, you use it on your own dudes and you just start bopping everybody in uh, in one side of the board. Like an entrenched on a Yoda is just, that guy's going on a rampage. <laughs> okay, that dude's running around killing everybody. He's a five seven with restore. Like he's gonna kill everybody. Um, same thing for like a Kanan Jarrus or an R two D two. Anyone with like a big booty, anyone who's got like a large health pool, you give them entrenched. Suddenly now they've got an even bigger health pool, but enough attack to kill a thing a turn, and that's really all you're looking at. Like R two D two is a four seven is just going to go off with entrenched. Same thing with Yoda, same thing with Restored Arc. Those guys are just going to love it. Bright Hope is really good because you also get it on a Sentinel. Like, you entrench a Bright Hope, suddenly it's a 4-9, and they have to kill it, and, like, that's no fun. <laughs> then you can flip Luke, attack with it, give the Bright Hope a shield, and, like, you can just really stop them in their tracks. Against Control or Aggro, if they've broken through on one side of the board, right, if they they broken through space and you don't have bright hopes, you don't have whatever. Um, you can always entrench and just say, stop hitting me, right? If they have a Fett's Fire Spray and you don't have a bright hope, a lot of times your answer to a Fett's Fire Spray is a bright hope with a shield on it. Um, if you don't have that and they have a Fett's Fire Spray ready to hit you in the face, entrench them. Just boop, stop attacking me, please. Um, you know, because all we need to do is really get to late game. That's it, and then we can we can win from there, right? Once we get to late game, we can we can definitely get it from there. So against a lot of mid range and aggro, we use entrenched on our own guys to make sure we clear a side of the board, because uh, we're going to play the control in that matchup. And if they break through on one side or they flip a leader and we're not in position to deal with it, entrench. Just stop attacking me. Stop it. Um, entrenching. Like a leader on the ground is definitely rough because we would like to play on the ground in the future. And having a unit that can just, you know, slam into us is bad. That being said, if you're staring down a flipped Vader with a Vader's lightsaber, 
I think I would rather give him plus three, plus three than die. I mean, he's extorting me, but I'm willing to be extorted at that point. Um, Battlefield Marine is just insane stats for cost. Two mana, three, three is one of the best brawlers in the start of the game, and I love him. I will ECL him a decent number of the time into aggro, a decent amount of the time. Spark of Rebellion, this was a three of, but I cut down because I wanted to try and fit in a couple other cards. Um, it's good in the control. It gets resourced into most other things. It has two modes, right? One, I'm winning on board. Uh, both times you're going to use it This because this costs four, right? This is not cheap for us. Um, if, if I'm playing this, I am winning on board. And there are two reasons I will play Spark of Rebellion. One, I have closed out the game against Sabine, and I would like them to not have for a cause I believe in, right? I would like them to not have that in their hand. Um, that is going to be by far the less likely way that works. I will have to, because I'm going to resource Spark of Rebellion. I'm going to resource a bunch of stuff, you know, in that matchup, right? Vanquish is probably getting resourced. Um, Spark of Rebellion, maybe home ones early. Right, restock for sure. Um, resupply is getting getting resourced against aggro. If I draw it against aggro and I've already won the board, then I can make sure they can't you know do anything about it, and that's great. But you really, this is in there for control. I have used it against enemy mid range decks once I've taken control of the board and just say, "Hi, your you know whatever does not get to happen." Right, your Feth's fire spray is not real. Your Darth Vader commanding the first legion that's not real. Like you don't get to have those. Sorry. Um, I heard somebody describe it as like, "Oh, if you spend four mana and remove something from their hand that costs seven mana, you." You have your up mana on it, and that's not how it works, right? I spent those four mana. They did not spend those seven mana. Um, but that being said, if you can gut their hand after you've established that you're winning on board, it's pretty decent. All the all other cases, resource it. Realistically, what this is here for is for control. If you strip their restock, the game ends. If you like, if you have your restock and you strip their restock, bye bye Buttercup. Like this game is over. Um, but realistically, it's I have the board because I'm the mid range deck into the control deck. I just need them to not have super laser blast, so I will make sure they do not have super laser blast, and then I will punt them in the face. Decent chance they will not see this coming, and a lot of the time they will allow you to play extra units on the board on turn seven because they know on turn eight you go sleepy. Um, so they'll allow you to play extra units on turn seven. They won't attempt to co you know constrict your board, and I'll tell you a decent amount of that deck you know d does not like trying to deal with a board that has three or four units on it. They really like dealing with a board that has one, right? They just power the dark side or Avenger or just, right? They just want to, you do an action, they do an action that removes your guy. And then if they allow you to develop a bunch of units, right? Either you U-wing reinforcement or, or whatever. And then it's heading into turn eight. You can claim the initiative and spark them right on the start of turn eight. And right, like you take an action and it's U-wing reinforcement. They do something, you hit them, they do something else. And then you just, right, you just U-wing reinforcement, they do something you claim, and then, bow, spark out their uh, super laser blast, and they lose the game on the spot. Uh, it's really good into control, so that's why I got it. It's, you put in the third against control in your sideboard, that's why I got that in there too. Um, but it's not so great, because you're going to be resourcing it a decent amount of the time. Uh, into a lot of decks, but we need an out into control and one restock, two spark of rebellions, and uh, some other things in here we can talk about. I mean, that's the dedicated anti-control tech. Is I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit some of these by the course of the game, um, especially the restock, and then we're going to just try and outvalue them. Yoda, he kind of sucked, to be honest with you. His stats are bad for three mana. Two four doesn't kill anything. Restore two is dope, but he's a little slow, right? You know, your opponent develops something, you develop Yoda, then, you know, it's Sabine time, and you're currently swinging with a 2-4. He basically needs Devotion or Entrenched or, I guess, in a pinch, Luke's lightsaber in order to do anything of substance at all. But if you do that, he's pretty decent. You can also Fleet LT, um, which is solid. If you have a Yoda with Entrenched they, and they flip Sabine, they're going to be in for a world of hurt. Um, which is not bad, and you're going to heal while it happens. Uh, he's decent into control decks because he, you know, two for ones, they kill him, you draw a card, it's a two for one. The more of those you have, the better it is. 
he's decent. He comes with Restore 2. Like, I'm not against him. I have the promo version of the card, and so, like, you know, ah, whatever. Um, he wasn't great. He wasn't great. He could become a variety of things. He could become a Consortium Star Viper, similar cost. He could he could stay as Yoda. I, I'm not 100% sure. He was all right. He wasn't great. Echo Base Defender, on the other hand, is my main man. Uh, his stats really, really, really want to be a three mana three four, uh, like very badly. But that would have been probably too strong. A uh, three mana three four Sentinel that would probably be too good. Just the fact he is a cheap Sentinel is what makes him really good. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he were just a better cell block guard, then yes. I mean, he is a better cell block guard, but not in a way that matters most of the time. Usually you want his health to be good. That dude is going to hold so many shields, you won't even be able to believe it. Uh, a lot of the time he will come off a Ewing reinforcement if you just need to burn an activation on your opponent's side, or you play him off Alliance Dispatcher on turn two and give him a shield and just shut down attacks on the ground for a while. I love Echo Base Defender. He's not crazy but he is a sentinel on three and that is or on turn two i suppose and that is nice uh loading him up with a shield also just shuts things down because they attack the shield they die you lose the shield they attack him they die you lose echo base defender and that's that is that's totally fine in a pinch you can ecl him out like your opponent plays a yoda you can ecl echo base and just blow them out of the game and that sort of thing is is really nice when it happens um but generally no Consortium Star Viper uh, is not heroic, which is a little sad, but ultimately it's fine. It's whatever. Um, the main reason I have this dude in my list, and he's probably going to a three of now that I actually have three copies, um, is not for the Restore 2. He's definitely there for the aggro matchup. Don't get me wrong. He's there for aggro, but he's not there for aggro for Restore 2. He's there because he's a 3-3 in space. <laughs> and that, that, that's it. That's really it. I mean, like, if you get the Restore 2, I'm not going to turn it down or nothing. Like, that's great. But he is there because he's a 3-3 for 3. And that is just a profile that uh, poops on aggro. Like, it's really good. You come off an ECL and you kill, a, you know, a green squadron A-wing for taking one damage back. Now they play something else, and you you know kill that too. Uh, he beats people down pretty decently because three damage in the sky every turn is just not something people can really just take with no repercussions. Just a three mana three three in space is a good profile. Your opponent plays a two three for two, which is a solid profile in space. He kills it and has life left over, which is good. Uh, and he's good off ECL, gets you the restore, but also just kills something. Just kills something. Bright Hope sometimes has problems killing things. He's a two six. That's not great again you want to do three damage consortium star viper ecl him boom kill you know that green squadron a wing kill that red three unstoppable right like like you get to kill those cards and you have a dude left who can then kill their friends it's pretty big right they play you know green squadron a wing you claim the initiative you sling consortium star viper into it you have a three two they drop red three you trade into that as well um yeah, they drop red three, you claim, you hit their red three, and suddenly they're no units, right? They have not managed to develop a card on the board, and you are up a significant amount. You you know, you played a battlefield marine on turn two, and suddenly your battlefield marine is making a big difference. Um or in turn one, sorry. Uh, you drop a battlefield. That's going to get to me forever. Um, the fact that the turn, turn one is two mana, turn two is three mana. But, like, you drop a battlefield marine on one, battlefield marine... You know, then they, they drop a, uh, a green squadron. You ECL Star Viper into their green squadron. They drop a red three. You claim. You hit their red three. And all of a sudden, like, you have a three three. They have nothing. And that is the combined output of the first two turns. All That's all you need to do, right? Eventually, you will get to turn seven, and you'll have Luke Skywalker, U-Wings, Redemptions, Home Ones, whatever, and it'll close the game out from there. Um, resupply. I didn't want three. Three is, there's there's a lot of matchups where you don't use it, right? You're not necessarily going to want it into control because you're going to reach those those turns anyway. Um, it's not bad into control by any means, but it is not great into aggro. <laughs> so realistically, it's used to go, you know, to one-up um, to one up mid-range decks. You one-up them, you get Luke out a turn early, which if they're not expecting it is a absolute beating. That's part of the reason why I wanted it. Right. On turn uh, four, with five mana up, you know, you play your turn, right? And they just aren't really clocking what's going on. 
and they play their turn, they tap out, you go resupply and drop Luke on that turn they weren't expecting, and then they're like, oh, oh no, and then they lose. Or resupply, drop Luke uh, leader, drop a lightsaber, you know, you hit something, drop a lightsaber on him. Uh, the value off that is very hard to uh, stop, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I wanted some amount, but I didn't really want three, considering you don't really use them into control that much, and you actively resource them into aggro. Because spending turn three doing nothing is a bad plan, and it's not one I like. Fleet Lieutenant is good. This was originally um, Wing Leader, but Fleet Lieutenant is good at, you know, I play Battlefield Marine, you play Thing, I play Fleet Lieutenant, and get an attack off it. Then you play something, and I claim the initiative. So Fleet Lieutenant is great for just holding on to the initiative token, which is big into uh, aggressive matchups. And you can also be kind of some burn off the top. Uh, it's good at, you know, giving Echo Base Defender plus 2 plus 0. Oh. Uh, it's good at giving Battlefield Marine plus 2 plus 0. Oh. If I have either of those in Sabine flips, it's Fleet Lieutenant and a clock. Um, so just good things there. It's great with R2-D2. It's good with Alliance Dispatcher. It's good with uh, Restored Arc. There's a lot of my early game units that where Fleet Lieutenant drops, I get an attack, and then if my opponent wants to do anything, I'll claim the initiative off, uh, off of that, which is a big deal. Kanan Jarrus is just a very efficient stat line. Four mana, four, five is good for just winning mid-range brawls, and he will heal you, uh, you know, based every time he attacks. He does a very complicated restore one or two where you're not sure which one it is. Um, I have restored zero, I think. There was, I think I milled a restock. I wasn't sad about it, I'll tell you that much, uh, and had no aspect or something to that effect. Um, I wasn't sad about it. Occasionally against control, you will hit something that will just mean that they don't have a fun time. If you mill their super laser blast, if you mill their Avengers, if you mill their restocks or their vigilances, they really don't like that. Now, that's random, right? Because you could just be milling your them to those cards. But I assume if I get to swing and mill three cards out of their deck, right? If I swing three times, mill three cards, or swing twice, mill two, or whatever. I assume they're going to draw, at some point in the game, they're going to draw like every other card in their deck. And so getting them earlier to some of those cards is not going to matter as much as the chance that it's like, oops, that was your restock. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know, just another chance they could lose the game. Uh, realistically, he's a four mana four or five with funny restore, and uh, that's why I like him. But like, you know, if he mills their vengeance, if he or um, avenger, sorry, not vengeance. If he mills their avengers, if he mills their restocks, their vigilance, their super laser blast, that's a number of targets where I'm going to be very happy that he hit it. Uh, and I'm just going to assume that they're going to get enough cards out of their deck that it's going to be a big deal. Bright Hope is nuts. <laughs> Bright Hope is one of the reasons to be green, in my opinion. Uh, it's a 2-6 uh, Sentinel in space for 4. That is a ridiculous stat line, and we are more than capable of buffing that stat line. Don't worry. Uh, Fleet Lieutenant is insane on Bright Hope. Just you go clock somebody, uh, you entrench, and they have to fight it. <laughs> right like you entrench a bright hope somehow i don't know how that works you know thematically wise but like bright hope finds a trench in space and suddenly you know green squadron a wing and red you know red three just like uh <laughs> uh they're just sitting there kind of going uh what do we do guys <laughs> what, what, what do we what do we do what do we do <laughs> because <laughs> what do they want to tangle with a five nine bright hope no but if they sit there I'll just kill them, and if they tr attack me, then they'll still die. Like it's it's Bright Hope with any kind of buff, it goes hard. Bright Hope also just with a shield token off of Luke goes really hard. You have not experienced a good time until you slam Bright Hope bring back an alliance dispatcher or something, draw a card. Your opponent drops a Fet fire Fet's fire spray and you shield Bright Hope. And the, the look on their face when they realize they will lose that fight is um, very funny to me. <laughs> uh, you both spent five mana, but your 2-6 with a shield will beat their 5-6. So... <laughs> and they can sit there not doing anything, but that's fine by me too. <laughs> yeah, the, the look on their face when they realize, oh, I'm going to lose this fight because... You know, I peel the shield and take two, and then I drop you to one, and I mean, they'll they'll tie the fight. Sorry, we'll kill each other. I don't know. That sounds fine to me. Um, 
Yeah, and then if you entrench or devotion it, it's just it just goes hard, right? Like you drop Bright Hope in the face of a you know Green Squadron A wing or something, and it just doesn't know what to do with itself. Um, it can win that. F I mean, it won't win that fight. It'll draw that fight, but it'll waste a lot of time uh, first. And if you drop Bright Hope plus entrench or devotion, you can just win the game on the spot. It's definitely possible, um, depending on the board position. Escort Skiff. This was just kind of a one of. Didn't feel that great. You can't shield it. It requires another green unit to be in play, which is a condition. Uh, if it's a four mana, four, four, just and that's it. It's not great. If it gains ambush, it's pretty decent. I don't know how I feel about it. It kind of feels the same as Yoda, where it's like, I'm going to be cutting this eventually. <laughs> I just don't know when exactly. Uh, Vanquish is here for the control matchups. I assume I'm going to draw into most of my one ofs and two of answers into them. Um, I also have two more in the sideboard. This is Avenger Hunting. If they are a control deck, they likely just have, in terms of like doing damage, they have their leader and like three Avengers, and a lot of the time that's it. And if you can kill those, then they have to mill you out. And at that point, you have until from then until the end of the game to just try and restock home ones, to try to you know get any kind of value possible. I've been thinking about Mon Mothma and recursion with Mon Mothma with Bright Hope and... Um, you know, home one out of the, you know, you wing reinforcement to pull out of the deck, bright hope to bounce it back and draw a card and then play it again. And then home one to play it again and again. Um, I don't know if I want to go as far as to say rogue squadron skirmisher. That feels like taking a bad unit so I can play Mon Mothma more, but I don't know. Maybe that's what you want to do. Um, but I don't have any Mon Mothmas in here. Uh, yeah. Vanquish is just trying to go late into control. You can blow up an Avenger, right? They play an Avenger, you sack an R2-D2 and Alliance Dispatcher, then you vanquish it and continue trying to push face. That can work. And I have two more in the sideboard so that I can just answer three Avengers. Just Avenger, you it dies. Avenger, it dies, right? They draw three Avengers, I draw three Vanquish at roughly the same rate, and that's just, it's a one-to-one, -one, right? Or whatever big dude they have, Reinforcement Walker. Um, it's good into mid-range. It's Good. It's great into control. I mean, permission doesn't exist in this game. So just having, hey, die is really good in this game uh, into, into control. That might get replaced with Rivals Fall just so I can deal with, you know, stupid Vaders coming out. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, I think Rivals Fall has no, it's just blue. I don't think it has uh, villainy as part of it, but I could be wrong. Uh, I, I liked having Vanquish. I liked having just spot you're dead. Uh, it was good into... It was good into mid anything that wasn't aggro. Um, so I would like siding in, to, you know, up to three. Traitorous was there for just to catch people off guard. It's a one of, so if they play around it, I usually don't get wrecked. Um, I'm playing green, so they, they decently likely might play around it. But if I, uh, <laughs> you know, if they play around, I don't get wrecked because I only have the one. But if they don't play around it, and like it, it gets pretty nasty, especially if they put any upgrades on their own guy. Uh, Luke unit is bananas. Uh, I had three of them. I splurged. I bought three. And oh my god, this dude. <laughs> he is an absolute beating when he comes down. Like, when I dropped Luke unit on people, they did, they did not like it. They did not like it at all. Um, he comes in. He blows something up. Almost always you can get that minus six, minus six. It's very easy. Uh, his stats are good. Restore three heals you up very quickly. Um, and again, he just blows something up when he comes in. And then because you have Luke Skywalker and home one, you want to, I mean, sorry, the thing behind my head is home one um, and two copies. Because you have home one and Luke Skywalker, when you go late, you just go to 12 resources and then you can drop home one to bring Luke back from the, you know, from the graveyard and... He's a beating from there, too. U-Wing Reinforcement uh, is just a very strong card. You search the top 10 cards of your deck for up to three units. It's a little inconsistent because sometimes what you're, like, what, you, what you're aiming for is, I don't have Luke, but I really need Luke, right? They just killed something. They have a, something at six or five with a shield or whatever. And you're like, man, I really need to deal with that unit right now. You go U-Wing Reinforcement and pray to the Luke gods that you get him off the heezy. Like... That's great and everything, but um, it's a little inconsistent because if Luke isn't in the top 10 cards, you don't get him with Ewing Reinforcement. But it will always get you something, right? It'll always get you, you know, it, it's a board in a can, right? It's a board in 
in a, one card. You know, they super laser blast you, you wing reinforcement shield, and then claim. It's just good at that, right? If you get a, you know, battlefield marine, echo base defender, and restored arc, you're not going to be sad about it, right? That's just a good spread of cards. A lot of the time you'll get two, right? You'll get Kanan and like echo base or something. And that's a, it's a hell of a, hell of a board for one card, right? You'll just refresh the board. Right, Battlefield Marine, Restored Arc, Yoda, you know. Occasionally, you can not have Fleet Lieutenant. You can dig for it with U-Wing to try and finish a game if you need some little burst off the top. You can. Um, I would say roughly half the time, I was really hoping for a Luke when I played this. And I was really hoping my top 10 cards in my deck would contain a Luke so I could play it. Um, and the other half of the time, I just wanted anything, which could have been a Luke. Um, Luke is like almost always the best pick in my opinion, but like sometimes you just need a deck, you know, you just need a board in a can. So you play U wing and you go like bright hope echo base defender and you just go stop hitting me, please. Uh, it's a great card. It's one of the reasons it's it and bright hope and, um, I mean, there, there's a bunch of ancillary benefits, but like it and bright hope is like the reason to be heroic green right now. Um, and I think it's really good. Luke unit is like one of the reasons to be heroic blue, to be, to be honest with you. Then we've got one redemption and two home ones. I wanted this to be three home ones. I did not own three home ones at that point in time. I do currently own three home ones. Um, so people like redemption quite a bit. It comes out, it can heal you for quite a lot, but if it heals you for quite a lot, it is a pushover to kill for sure. I mean, if you play it on turn where you have nine mana, you can play it, heal yourself for eight, give it a shield. They will kill it before it gets the shield. But like, if that's something you're really, really worried about, unless they don't have a unit in the board, which can happen. Um, it is decent. It, Redemption is good. I'm probably going to cut it for another home one, but it is good, and I will list out the reasons why. Um, it's got good stats, first off. I, have, I did play this into a uh, Boba Yellow that I knew had shoot first. So I played it and I healed my base for two, and then I was a six seven. So if they shot first, they would still um, they had a they had a Fetz fire spray out. If they shot first, they would drop me to one, and then I would punch them um, physically. Uh, so you can restore like marginal gains to your base, and then and be this giant wall because it has Sentinel, or you can drop it. And I did this because he bounced it, he waylaid it. And then I just dropped it and healed eight because uh, I dealt with the Fetz Fire Spray at that point. So, like, his Fetz Fire Spray, like, didn't do anything. Then I dealt with it somehow. I think I might have vanquished it or something. I, I don't really remember. But the point was he bounced back to my hand. And I was like, all right, good point. Heal for eight. And I went back to, like, zero health after a bit. And I have, like, Luke's hitting him and, you know, some various stuff happening. Here's the thing. Healing your base for eight is a hell of a drug. But... Then you're left with a 6-1 for 8, which is not a good stat line. Like it's a really bad stat line, actually. And I don't love that. Uh, he, and then after that, it's like it's never really efficient at any point in there. I don't know. I liked it. I didn't love it. Uh, that might be a bit nitpicky, whereas home one felt like a beating each and every time I played it. And it does also heal you. Now, it doesn't heal you in a burst. There are things it does worse than, than redemption for sure. But what it does better is just absolutely beating your opponent into the dirt when you play it. Because you play home one, you get a bright hope, and you lock them out of space, right? That costs you nine. You play it, you drop an echo base defender. Suddenly, you know, they if they had one attack on the ground, they bounce off. They kill the echo base defender. Uh, and then on the following turn, you just hit them in the, in the face of the home one heal two or you drop another unit or something home one is just this massive value engine it's also a pretty decent reason to be heroic green to be honest with you um and it is the reason you go to 12 resources basically every time with this deck unless you are absolutely crushing the life out of your opponent um because you go late with home one and luke skywalkers and you just outvalue people badly like boba yellow you just need to survive the onslaught and then your late game is brutal right and once you start dropping ryu wings and luke units and home ones to bring back echo base defenders home ones to bring back bright hopes home ones to bring back luke skywalkers it gets nasty um and they just can't keep up with it and they just fall apart and die uh it's good into control because you get two bodies for the price of one they have 
to answer both. If they answer both with single target removal, it's a two for one. Same with Yoda. Uh, same with Bright Hope if you bounce something back to your hand. So you have this decent amount of two for one sort of gameplay. And then you can restock three of them right back to the bottom, draw them, and just go, uh, another home one, deal with it. Another home one, deal with it. And a lot of the time, they won't be in a position where they can restock like super laser blasts, right, just to deal with it because they've you know, hit you with the, the big mill stick off of Vigilance. And so they're currently operating with 10 cards remaining, but you go restock three home ones and you're like, deal with the home one. And they're like, ah, oh, that's tough. And then they deal with it and they blow out a bunch of cards and you're like, all right, following turn, good point. Deal with the home one. And they're like, oh no. And then you take three and re or you take six or whatever and restock. And then you're just like, home one again, please. And each home one comes stapled with a Luke Skywalker, and that's just no fun for them. So uh, you can definitely, if, like, if they go vigilance, 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 and they're still like 10 cards left in their deck, so their restocks just aren't that good. You can definitely grind them out with home ones and restock as a game plan. Now, that does depend on you drawing the restock and not getting it milled out in the 18 cards they milled, but, you know, say la vie, right? You have another restock in your sideboard. Go crazy, my dude. Um, ultimately, I loved home ones so much, I just want the redemption to turn directly into a home one and move on from there. Uh, as far as changes go, sideboard, I included a second restock to be a little more resilient there. Included another Spark of Rebellion to be a little bit more resilient there. Two more Vanquishes. Um, and, you know, that was my game plan is we're going to go to the late game. I'm going to have two restocks, so the odds I draw one before you can mill them off is unlikely. The odds that you, you know, get all the Spark of Rebellions before you can mill them off is unlikely. Um, so I'll be able to either kill their restock if they just have one, or I can pull a Super Laser Blast or an Avenger or something out of their hand that would have been really annoying for me to deal with. Uh, Vanquish is also just one for one each of their big threats because they usually don't have that many. And we go late, and I go more of a value engine like e Yoda gives me a card when he dies. Uh, home one brings a second dude with him. Bright Hope draws a card. And you just keep grinding until eventually, hopefully, they fall over. Not the easiest thing in the world, but that's the game plan. Um, definitely doable. I have done it. I've also had it fall apart, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, against aggro, you got Devotion. You got Make an Opening. You've got uh, System Patrol Craft that's probably going to exit my sideboard and it's either going to turn into a star viper now that i have three or it's going to go into the main board as a star viper um not really sure on that i like having a redemption in the sideboard it's good into things like um like uh, boba it's good there it's really only good there i don't really want it into aggro because it's a little like sure it'll close out the game against sabine but also i'm dead before i get to use it or if i made it to redemption i'm probably already won i have enough healing to where i don't need it in that make an opening is insane into boba yellow it's insane into well it's insane to bobas of any kind to be honest with you because uh, they uh, are a trying to burn you out because your your late game is better than theirs and b uh, so if you can heal, that's great. But B, they also have Seventh Fleet Defender, and they have Crafty Smuggler, which are X twos with a shield as their two drop of like their premier two drop and their premier three drop is an X two with a shield, and make an opening just absolutely ragdolls them in that in that regard, and so that's great. It's also good into um, Sabine game plans of various stripes like. I suppose, like, if you have a 3-3 and they flip Sabine, you can make an opening so it's down with 0-3 and then you can kill it. Um, and it can't do any damage to you. It can do one, I suppose. Um, it, there's a lot of scenarios where it might be good. Because it only does two damage, right? It's, it's minus two, minus two. But because it's only minus two, minus two instead of minus three, minus three, killing things can be a little tough. Uh, a lot of their stuff has three health, so... You either need to kill something wounded or they need to be playing something that has, you know, two or less health. It's great into Boba because, again, they, they play Seventh Fleet Defender. They play Crafty Smuggler. If you're playing Boba Green, they probably play those cards. If you're playing Boba Yellow, they definitely play those cards. And so make an opening just absolutely ragdolls them. And if they've done any damage to you, it counteracts that. And they probably have to be on an aggro game plan into you. The third resupply is there for mid-range game plans where you really want to get up on people. Like I played into a Tarkin list where... <sighs> This was so stupid. Game two, he won game one, and then game two and three, 
I resupplied on turn two and resupplied on turn three and then dropped Luke. <laughs> I won both of those games. It was so stupid. <laughs> I mean, it might have honestly been game one and two. I think I think it was game one and two, um, where, you know, I I drew two of them in my opener, and I was just like, all right, this is the game plan I'm going with. I did nothing on turn one, and I claimed, and I paid resupply on turn two, went up to four mana, then played, you know, went up to five, and played resupply went up to six. This is on turn three, and then flipped Luke's. <laughs> And at that point, yeah, he'd started doing things with the board, but I got a free 4-7, and I was, you know, the following turn I was cooking with seven mana, so a Luke Skywalker unit came out. And I will tell you, he did not even remotely come back from, I skipped my first two turns, and then I dropped Luke unit, or dropped Luke leader, then I dropped Luke unit on turn four. Yeah, dropping Luke unit on turn four ends games. So, like, having it into other mid-range strategies is a very good thing. Having it into, like, Vader mid-range, having it into Boba mid-range, having it into, I mean, <laughs> screw it, Tarkin mid-range. It was pretty nice. It was pretty good. Um, so, it, it comes out against aggro. It goes in against, uh, against mid-range. And it's a very good ability there. Now, those are probably going to change out for uh, Spark of Hope come Shadows of the, uh, Shadows of the Galaxy. But um, that is not out just yet so that is my loot green list that's my thoughts on every card in it uh it played really well i was very happy with it uh, i got top four which was great i only lost to uh nick unfortunately uh, i lost to a control deck in top four um unfortunately in the games i lost which was into nick and into the control deck now i played nick in an, a couple extracurricular games and i won all of those so i was a bit sad about that <laughs> um but uh, those my deck just did not cough up units in the right order so it might just be that we want uh to be a little more consistent like i have quite a few th cards that are not units so maybe spark of rebellion actually wants to be something else i don't know i'm gonna think on it um it was very consistent and had great you know like i liked having you know three lukes three u-wings three big space units because once the game got to the late game it just felt like it was in my ballpark and i just ground people out and they didn't really have anything they could do about it because they would overcome whatever thing i'd put onto the board and it'd take them a while and be tough and then i would just play another one right like I would play Luke, it would blow something up, it would take a bunch of resources, it would heal me, they would finally kill it, and I'd drop home one into Bright Hope, and just like, oh god, now they deal with that, and then i drop, you know, another Luke, and the, the game would just be, it would devolve so quickly. Um, so I liked having that top end of nine cards, it's possible I want to like, mess around with some spark of rebellions and yoda and make them a little more proactive i'm not sure escort skiff felt a little whatever traitorous felt a little whatever but they're one ofs right they're not showing up most of the time so i don't know i was very happy with the list broadly it did very very well uh it played its games very very well um and occasionally just lose games and that's that's how it works so very happy with it. I'm definitely going to keep playing it. I think we're going to probably go to an event uh, this weekend, which has probably already uh, happened if you're watching this. Um, but yeah, I love Luke's, Luke Green. I love various kinds of Luke mid-range, so I'm going to continue to play it. All right. Well, that is it for us for today, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you all later. Loving Star Wars Unlimited and going to keep playing it. Bye-bye.